in New Zealand, sheep shearing is a serious business. It was 2009 when we headed there to meet up with Paul Avery, one of the world's finest ever sheep shearers. The then world champion had also been a two-time winner of competitive shearing's most prestigious event, the Golden Shears. You drag the sheep out of the pen and you start on, on the belly down through this area and um, then you go around the crutch, down the first hind leg and up the tail, which we call the undermine, and up and blow over the top of the head and up the neck and across the side of the face and then around the back of the head, dropping into the first front leg and then uh, down into the long blow, which is the, the longest blows right up the full length of the sheep, over the backbone to the last side and then you take the last cheek off the side of the face and then head down to the last front shoulder and then uh, take, yeah, take the front shoulder off and then down to the flank and out the last hind leg. New Zealand has over 30 million sheep, seven for every man, woman and child. It's also the largest producer of strong wool, outputting a quarter of the global total, over twice as much as the next biggest producer, China. Avery lived with his family in Taranaki on New Zealand's North Island. The farmer topped up his income with the prize money he won from shearing competitions. In 2009, the global economic downturn, coupled with a serious drought which had affected the area, were making his life tough. And like many sheep farmers, Paul was turning to rearing cattle to help bring in some extra cash. Well, there'll always be sheep in New Zealand because um on the steep hill country, you, you can't run anything else. I mean, you can try and run a few cattle on them, but they fall off and break their necks, so that's where sheep come into their own. Um, it, yeah, the, the sheep numbers have taken a big dive the last few years because the, the wool industry has been really struggling. One of New Zealand's most iconic sporting events, the Golden Shears, takes place in Masterton every year to decide who's the best shearer around. At the inaugural Golden Shears of 1961, spectator numbers were so great the local army was called in to control the crowds. The event was a hit from the off. Seats had to be booked 12 months in advance. Before long, sheep shearing entered the world of professionalism. Major businesses wanted to promote and sponsor this new, physical and unorthodox sport. Prize monies increased, and many shearers adopted professional attitudes with training programs and fitness regimes. The main attraction each year remains the Golden Shears Open Shearing Championship, and one man has dominated the competition like no other. a lot more titles if it wasn't for one man. Um, I've been up against the world's best and David Fagan who's won the world championships five times and um, it's just unfortunate to be in, in the same era as him um, otherwise I could have had uh, 400 titles by now so uh, I think David's got about 580 or 590 championships so um, yeah I think I'm currently running second I think you've just got to have that desire to want to succeed as, as in any sport or any job and um, not be afraid of hard work of course. It's extremely physical and extremely hard but um, hard work never killed anyone, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and just be very competitive really. Perseverance is, is the name of the game. If you, want, if you want to be good at something you just have to keep your head down and your bum up and it will, it will come to you. My first final ever at Belclutha at the Otago Championships, as a young fellow I said, what, what do I do when I go in this final? And he said, start off fast and steadily get faster. You can't go wrong if you do that, can you? It's pretty, pretty simple. Shearers, on your marks, get set, go! They're into the pen, ladies and gentlemen. David Fagan had won 16 Golden Shears since 1986, including an incredible run of 12 victories in a row. 
It took Paul Avery 12 attempts before he claimed his first Golden Shears crown. At the 2009 edition, Fagan again triumphed over Avery in a remarkable final in which a mere 52 seconds separated the six finalists after they'd finished shearing their 20 sheep. We discovered how Paul's wife, Deborah, had looked after their four girls and their family farm over the years when he was away competing at events. Yep. 110% dedication, that's your whole life. Your family comes into it, but you've got to be totally dedicated, 100, 100 and just about 200%. When they got married, Paul told his new wife that he had two goals in life, to own a farm and to be the shearing world champion. After winning the title in Norway in 2008, Paul knew he could retire a happy man. For 20 years, Paul had also competed on his national circuit. He'd won the Golden Shears twice and the North Island Shearer of the Year four times. Traditionally, shearers toil for nine hours in a 12-hour working day. They have breaks for breakfast and lunch and two half-hour stops called smokos. A good shearer will receive 90 bucks for 200 sheep shorn each day. In 1993, Edsel Ford set a record for the number of sheep shorn in a day, a total of 664. At the time, Ford also underwent a physical examination and it was found that, of the mighty All Blacks rugby union team's players, only one was fitter than the sheep shearer. But it's not just fitness that's important in this sport. Well, this is the instrument we use. It's called a handpiece. Um, and you have a, a comb, this comb here, and a cutter that uh, goes backwards and forwards. 2,850 revolutions a minute. A, a comb lasts, generally it lasts an hour, and a cutter lasts about 15 minutes. So um, you know, you've got eight combs and 32 cutters to grind every night. So, you know, you can be mentally strong and as fit as you can be, but if you haven't got the right comb on, you won't win. Life was tough on the farm for Paul. His father was a farmer before him, but his own future wasn't so certain, as the price of wool had been dropping steadily since 1990. Meanwhile, man-made alternatives to sheep's wool continue to squeeze this industry, including fleeces made primarily from recycled plastic drinks bottles. But there's nothing quite like wool, and as long as there are sheep on New Zealand's hillsides, there'll be men like Paul Avery and David Fagan competing to see who can shear the most.